Hello viewers, this is Dr. Fast here. In today's video, I will be installing the AutoVox X1 review mirror dash cam. Now in a previous video, I did a full unboxing and review of this device. If you have not seen that, I will link it at the end of this video. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to install this unit. I'll be installing the unit in this 2008 Honda Odyssey. You'll need to run three wires to the rear view mirror area. One is for power, another one for GPS antenna, and a third one is AV cable. Now need to go to the back of the vehicle for the rear camera. Before you install the mirror, don't forget to remove this protective film on the front camera. Here's a comparison look between the factory mirror and the Autovox X1. To install the X1 mirror onto the factory mirror, slide the camera out to fit the width of the factory mirror, place in front of it, bring the rubber straps over and under and hook it into the bottom. Do the same thing for the other strap. Next, plug in the three cables, AV cable, GPS antenna, power cable, here I'm going to run the AV cable and the power cable up to the headliner. You just tuck it underneath the headliner, over to the A-pillar. With the GPS antenna, I'm going to run this cable to the right side of the windshield so I don't have so much cable running on the left side. So here I'll place a GPS antenna in this location right here. Pull back the weather stripping on the A-pillar. Remove the cover on the A-pillar. For the power cable, I ran this down the A-pillar, put a couple of tie wraps here. For the AV cable, I'm going to run this up along the edge all the way to the back of the vehicle. If you have a sedan, it might be easier for you to run this cable down to the side at the bottom here. With the cable, I ran it along the side right here, under and over, to right here. And then plug in your power adapter into a 12-volt accessory port. With any additional wire you have, just tuck it behind the panel. With the AV cable, I'm going to run this on the outside edge and not the inside edge because there's a side curtain airbag. If it goes off, it's going to come out this way. With the wire coming out on the left side here, I'm going to run this along the edge right here over to the right side, in through this loom, and out onto the lift gate. Here I have the wire coming out on this side. Now I'm feeding this wire underneath the panel and out into this opening. Next, I'll feed it into this rubber loom and into the lift gate. Let me give you a little tip. Whenever you have to feed wire through a rubber loom, get some WD-40 and spray inside. And that'll help with feeding that wire through much easier. So I taped a new wire onto an old wire I already had running in the loom from a previous install. Now, if you don't have that, all you need to do is get a coat hanger and use it to feed through this loom here. And here you can see how easy it was to pull it through after you spray WD-40 inside. And now I'll run this cable into the hatch. As for mounting the backup camera, I've gone ahead and removed the trim piece above the license plate. I also removed the metal bracket on the backup camera here. The plan is to install this camera in the factory location where the factory camera would be right here. So after installation, it'll look like this. Here you see an access hole I drilled in a previous install. That's what I used to pass a wire from the inside of the vehicle to the outside. Now in your vehicle, if you already have an opening you can use, go ahead and use that. But on this vehicle, there are no other holes open to pass that wire.
I'll use a piece of full tape to cover this hole. On this vehicle, the backup reverse light is right here. So if you follow the wire, it goes over to here. And these two wires you see right here is from a previous install. But basically the backup wire is going to be on this green wire. And the negative is going to be on this black wire. If you follow the green wire, it goes out onto this red wire. I'll connect the red wire onto the red wire of the AV cable. Now connect the rear camera to the AV cable. Here's a look at the back with the camera installed. Let me turn on the unit and I'll show you how it works. Once the unit powers on, the recording will begin automatically. That's indicated by the flashing red dot right here. Now, if you look at this view, you can actually adjust the height of this view by simply using your finger and dragging on the screen. Now right now you're looking at the rear camera. If you want to switch to the front camera, tap the screen, press this button right here, and now we'll switch to the front camera. And again, with this camera, you can also do the same thing. Now in the unboxing and review video, I talked about the driving mode. And here in the vehicle, I'm gonna show you how that really works. So right now the driving mode is disabled. Let me go into settings. As you can see, driving mode is disabled. In this mode, when you go back to the main screen, the LCD screen that you see right here will always remain on. Now, if we go into the settings and turn on the driving mode, the screen looks like what we saw earlier, but after one minute, this rear view will turn off and you'll be looking at a mirror and you just saw a switch. So right now you're looking at the reflection of the mirror. On the left side, we have speed and the lane departure warning system, the clock and the date on the right side. It will remain in this view until you touch a screen and it'll go back to a rear camera view. Now at any time, if you want to disable this view, press the power button once. And if you want to completely turn off all the display so you only have the view of the mirror, press the power button one more time. And now everything's turned off and you're only looking at the reflection of the mirror. To turn display back on, you simply have to tap the screen and it comes back on. So that's the difference between having the driving mode enabled and disabled. For me, I'm gonna have the driving mode enabled so this LCD screen is not always on. And if you want to turn on the LCD, it's very simple, just tap the screen. Now I'll show you how the display look when you put the car in reverse. So this is the backup view and you can see the image is lowered so you can see any objects right behind your bumper. Now with this view, you can also adjust the angle. When I put it in park, it'll go back to the other view. Now, of course, with everything we're doing here, the front camera and rear camera is still recording continuously. And when you shut off the vehicle, the unit will turn off automatically. Now during the review, I did run into one time when the unit locked up. Remember there's a reset button at the very top next to the micro SD memory card. You can reset the unit. But what I learned is that you need to make sure you use a class 10 high speed micro SD memory card. If you have a lesser quality memory card, it can cause the unit to lock up. Keep that in mind. Next, I'll show you some additional benefits and features on this unit. So let me show you where this rear view dash cam come in handy. So in the back, I have this large box. Now with this box in the back, you're not going to be able to see anything through the rear view mirror. But with this Autovox X1, it will allow us to see everything through the rear camera. And here's a back view. Even though I have this big box in the back. 
And if I need to back up the vehicle, I have a clear view right here. Let me show you how well the rear camera works at night. So if I turn the camera to the back of the vehicle, you can see it's dark outside. Now we'll look at the X1 unit here. Look at that. Crystal clear. And again, here's a look at the back. Here I've enabled the LDWS or Lane Departure Warning System. So let's test it out. The LDWS feature on this dash cam actually works very well. It did not give a lot of false alerts like other dash cams I've tested in the past. And it was quite accurate in detecting your vehicle veering into another lane. So if you want, you can enable this feature and add a level of safety to your driving. The dash cam will automatically copy the DVR player software onto the microSD card. So if you look at the microSD card folder, you'll find a software called DVR player version 2.0. You'll need to install that onto your PC. And here I have the software open. To use the software at the bottom, there is a folder icon right here. Click on that and select the location of the video file that's recorded on the microSD card. Now I've gone ahead and copied some of these files onto my computer. Once you select the folder, all the video files will show up on the right side. You can select any of these files. Once you have selected the video file and press play, the video will be played at the top left hand corner. Below that is a G sensor data. In the middle we have the Google map and it will show you the direction of travel. On the right we have the speed and the compass. So let me play this video clip and you'll see the Google map will show you exactly the direction of your travel. And this is how you can use this DVR player to show the recorded GPS data on your video file. As you saw in the video, this AutoBox X1 full screen LCD rear view mirror works really well. Having a full length LCD display on your rear view mirror 
really help with seeing what's behind your vehicle, whether it's during the daytime or nighttime. And if you happen to have SUV, minivan, or work truck, if your cargo area is filled with things blocking the rear window, this mirror will give you the ability to see everything behind the vehicle. As for the dash cam functionality, the video recording for both daytime and nighttime is very good. You're able to make out license plates in front of you. The microphone on this unit also works very well. It's able to pick up the sound inside the vehicle and also some of the sound from outside the vehicle. As you saw in the review video and also this install video, both the parking mode and lane departure warning system work very well. Also don't forget this unit comes with a GPS antenna. With that you get speed reading, compass and data logging. So this unit is packed with a lot of great features. If you want to learn more about this unit, I will include the link in the description below. Let me know what your thoughts about this product. If you have any questions or comments, leave one in the comment section. Don't forget to click on a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click on that bell so you'll receive notification of the latest video. Thank you.